Hi everybody and welcome back to our channel. Okay, so on this particular episode we are Turning actually left. en route to go to you go because you have right away mister. So we are actually en route to the river in Arklo. So we're gonna do a bit of fishing there. Yeah, uh, last summer, which is around this time now, uh, last year, I went down and fished a lot at that river. Um, caught a lot of big sized roach mm. and it's also a salmon and trout river as well. Uh, no pike, no perch, nothing like that. But yeah. there's still fish. Um, so hopefully we're gonna go down now and see a load of fish like I did last summer. Hopefully. Well, there's a chance we won't. Yeah. Well, in that case, no we're gonna go to the harbor. Yeah, but there's no harm having a look, checking it out, and seeing how the fishing situation is. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do that, and we'll see you guys in a few minutes. Yep. Bye. This was the spot. But there's nothing in the world. Not even a minnow. Want to check a little further down? Yeah. Hey everybody, how's it going? We're actually just scouting out the, the river here in Arklo and trying to figure out if there's any fish. Yeah, I was here last summer, did a good bit of fishing and mm. I fed a swim for about a week and got some really nice sized roach. They're pretty big. Um, as roach go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's also a salmon and trout river, and we've seen some schools of very small fish. Mm. Don't. Was that another one? No, that's no. a twig. We're seeing things at this point. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we've seen a couple schools of small ones. Um, don't know what they are, really. They look too big to be minnows, so they could possibly be a um, young baby trout, maybe. Maybe. If they're spawning here, but it's. As Daffy just said, it's brackish water. Yeah. So we don't know yet. No. Well, anyway, we're going to keep checking this out, and we'll see you guys in a few minutes. And this is what's wrong with the river. Just jumped there or something thrown in. I'm not sure. I just saw a big splash. This is why we don't eat anything out of the river. Yeah. Like this is, we don't know where this comes from. See that giant cloud in the water? Uh -huh. oh, that's that. nasty. What's up? Here we are back at our famous uh, harbor fishing spot. We got drinks! Drinks. Well, the tide is definitely 100% out. I don't know. I mean, the, the, the tide here is weird. It doesn't change that much. Mm. It doesn't change that much. I mean, it goes up a couple of feet, as you can see, but yeah. generally, this is as far out as it goes. Well, no, but, we've um, come up to about here before. Yeah, but this is as far as... Oh, look! Oh, doesn't that look like a sheet of lead? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm walking on the green stuff, which is a stupid, but it's mostly dry, so I'm all right. Um, Don't do this when you're... Nasty fishing. But right? there was one night here, it's in one of our videos, where uh, in the space of half an hour, I got three different species. Oh. I got the rockfish, I got the place or the flounder, and I got a whiting. Yeah. And that was a good day's fishing for me. I was happy with that. Oh, look, that was a crab. <laughs> that was a crab. It was a crab. 
but yeah so there's a couple of species around here literally under the rock i'm standing on there should be some rockfish because uh that's Which is odd you don't really see them down the center no um yeah it's the first one i actually ever saw ever seen ever saw ever seesaw on the seesaw And this, uh, this little area is very deceptive because sometimes you might see fish or you might not see fish mm -hmm. but you'll definitely catch something like around the start of the winter <laughs> um we were here and we were catching a lot of whiting mm. a lot of very small whiting but yeah whiting they were and that got us our appetite for actually doing some sea fishing because mm -hmm. as soon as we started catching fish here we took it up over there. I'm not sure if you can see it over there, but it's a pond over there. Yeah, we decided to take it up over there by where the bridge is over there. And yeah, we started catching more fish over there as well. Mm -hmm. And then we started taking it from there and then we went over to the beach. Yeah. And over on that wall over there, past these boats, on the actual sea wall over there, or the harbour wall over there. Mm. <laughs> oh, look. Oh. <laughs> No idea if they can see that. They look like mullet. Yeah, do you wanna throw out the line? No, they look like really baby mullet. Yeah. Oh, it could be mackerel. Because it is mackerel season right now. So I might... You know what? I'm gonna throw out a line. Hopefully they don't get too scared off. Yep, they just saw me and went the other way. So we're back at the house. We've had, so far, unsuccessful. Loads of fish. Loads of fish around, just nothing really. <laughs> Saw um, two schools of baby mullet. So the mullet are starting to come in, which is good. Um, but we're back at the house, we're gonna have some food. Mm -hmm. We got pizzas on. And then we're gonna hit the beach. Yeah. So yeah, here we are at the beach. Yeah. We're beaching it. There's um, a nice bit of sun up there. Lean backwards, so you get that all in frame. <laughs> Standing at a 45 degree angle. Yeah, this is our usual beach that we normally go to. We've been very successful here before. Pretty much this exact same spot as well. Yeah. One of my favorite spots actually. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh we definitely got on something. I hope that in. Oh, Jesus. I don't know. Are you happy? <laughs> Yeah. What? What the hell? Oh yeah, they're getting eaten. Yeah. I had two on that bottom one. I tell you what. There you go. Go find some big rocks. <laughs> Bigger than that. <laughs> Look for big rocks. Big rock. Don't think you're gonna get much better than that, folks. <sighs> that looks tasty to me. Excellent. All right, here. 
We'll take it. Yeah. We'll take it. Ready, take ready, it, ready, take it, ready, take ready, it. ready, keep, ready. Keep, keep, keep the tension. Keep the tension. Oh god, this is a fish. Oh, this is a fish. <laughs> Doggo. <laughs> Hold on. Let him down. Let him down. Oh man, he's bleeding a lot. Oh, is he? No, no, he's yeah. not. He's bleeding a lot. There's my phone. I think I got him right in the top of his mouth. Nah, that's okay. He'll be fine. Yeah, no, I see it. I see the puncture wound, he'll be fine. Yeah. It's only a small one. Hey everybody! Look! Doggo! <laughs> hey! We got okay. some doggo. We gotta let him go. We gotta let him go. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Hey! <laughs> Good job, man! Well, there's some amazing stuff out there. Caught our first doggo. Let's camp out another one. Yep. Okay, hang on. Oh, no, no, no. Just watch him down. Cool. Where? Yeah, we're good. Come on, buddy. Second doggo. Ooh. Come on, buddy. And he's off. Definitely need to rebait. <laughs> Do we have any smaller hooks? It's not that, it's the barb. Alright, well then I'm gonna squeeze the barb down on these. I'm feeling bad for how much these guys are bleeding. Because, yeah. uh, to be fair, like these are smaller dogfish than the other ones we were catching, yeah. and they weren't bleeding. Hey, look, Daffy caught a fish. Daffy got his first fish. And it's a whiting, which has been through his eye, so he's gonna die. Oh, he's dead. He's he dead. He dead. 100%. He's probably dead already. Oh, no, oh. he's still alive. Yep. But he's gonna die, so we're gonna dispatch of him and yeah. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Get rid of him. Yeah. We are actually heading off to a new spot. We're gonna check it out, yep. but we're not actually going to be doing any sort of fishing. And just to suss out if there's any fish there, any good little spots, that sort of thing. Yeah, you know? it's a place we've been eyeing up for a while. It's down the south end of Arklow Beach, mm -hmm. um, Arklow South Beach. There's a couple of rock jetties and there's a, there's a little pier as well. Yeah. We want to check that out. Um, hopefully we'll get out before it's completely dark. Yeah. Um, we'll see you guys in a few minutes. If you want to hang out, you got to think about... Okay. Rock exploring. There's a car down that way. It looks like we can park over there. Yeah, reckon that might be a good place then. What's that floating? Oh, well, hold on. Is that a sea otter? Huh? Is that a sea otter? Yes. Yeah. Is it? What is it? Oh, a seal. Looks a bit small to be a seal. Ugh. Over there looks better if you go out the edge of the jetty. Yeah. Well, either way, I don't mind, man. It looks like the top of the f that jetty thing is all flat as well. Yeah. That um, might be the better option. Right. Well, the scene of the beginning, I'll flop more, more than 
Should drive down and have a look. Yeah. No harm, like. No harm. Sort of yeah, because it's not a very neat jetty, it kind of spills off at all sides. Mm. Careful around here, dude, these don't look too steady. If you cast out straight ahead there, you'll be fine. Yeah. Cast straight out. You can actually use the other laws. I'll well, get some. Maybe there's something in there. See that pair? Yeah. I want to try and get out there somehow. Yeah. I yeah. reckon, oh no, we won't be able to drive out there. Maybe not. Might be able to walk. Yeah. Well, so we, we, we can try and have a look around. Well, <sighs> it's worth out. a gander. We're checking out. Whoa! -ho! Oh, sh**. Did you see that? Yeah. It was that one you're standing on. F*** me. Jesus, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> F that was scary. <laughs> if this is still recording, what just happened was a big rock just went from under my foot and sank down about six inches. It was f***ing terrifying. <laughs> Ever see 127 hours? Yeah. Yeah. Don't want that shit happening. Guaranteed, my knife is a bit sharper than his, but... Yeah. <laughs> he had a, a weird Swiss army knife type. Yeah, he had a little pen knife. I gave him. One of the things he says is, don't buy cheap equipment. <laughs> <laughs> this goes with our point, saying that always make sure that you have multiples of everything. Yep. So that guy... He was... Mind you, I still don't like the idea of actually having to slice off the rock. No, man. I reckon there is... We haven't slipped out here, so we don't know if there's going to be... No, I haven't seen any discarded lures or anything, so... Well, that's also a good point. But there isn't any discarded things. Well, I to say that uh, we're not allowed to try it out. As Graham would say from TA Fishing, you've got to be in it to win it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so you probably saw the, the footage of us actually going through the jetties there. We didn't make it over to the pier because, well, light was just yeah, the light was failing. Yeah, mm. so we stayed out there a little bit longer than we should have. But it was nice to actually see some graffiti because that graffiti actually said 
please take your rubbish out. Yep, please hmm. take home your rubbish. Beach is not does toilet. I'm not sure that's what that means. not the drink talking. That's actually what it said. <laughs> um, is but, not does toilet. I'll probably put a still right there just so you guys can see. But <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it was a funny bit of, there, like. Yeah, at least they know we know that they care. Yeah, and people remember next time you go to the beach, do not does toilet. Do not does toilet. Don't does toilet at the beach. <laughs> Uh, stay in school, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Learn the English. Yeah, don't do dergs. Don't do dergs. Learn the grammar. Yeah, dergs are bad. Okay. Do okay. not those dergs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, anyway. Um, did I... <laughs> oh, so, please, guys, take your rubbish home. But this will lead on to our second point. Um, a week ago, we actually were fishing. You probably saw the video footage yeah, of that. Down at our last, uh, our mm -hmm. usual little spot. Mm -hmm. And it got to about two in the morning. So it was, it was a late night. We, mm -hmm. uh, we only went down at like nine o'clock or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, we drove down the road, parked up. Everything was fine. Went, did a bit of fishing. Everything was fine. Mm -hmm. Then I decided to go and have a look up at the harbour. Because during this time last year, you go along, there'd be a lot of whiting jumping up out of the water and trying to get at you. Um, so I got up to where the car was parked and I looked down the road we just came down and there was this kind of crumpled up looking thing and uh, I decided you know I'm going to go check that out because that wasn't <coughs> there when we were driving down about two hours or something before that hmm. and then uh, I got I got there checked it out saw what it was and I had to call Daffy yeah, at this point I was still at the beach fishing, and there should be there should be sorry to cut it, but there should be footage of me actually finding the bird in the first place. Yeah, well, either way, I will will be switching back and forth. Uh, so if it is dizzy or if you don't like it, please let me know in the descriptions below, because um, this is all going to be back and forth between that footage and, and right current. Now. Yeah. So yeah, so at this point I was still at the beach, and Jared called out to me and I was like oh cool he probably found some fish and there's me running up the yeah, beach yeah I was like dude you need to come check this out like. yeah and I saw him in the middle of the road I was like what is he doing he's shining a light on this thing in the middle of the road so I was like what is this started running over and realized that um it was a seagull yeah a very big seagull a really big seagull <clears throat> it's uh literally the size of uh, from head to the bottom of my torso and uh, really big Beautiful looking bird, mm -hmm. and most people here at this point will be like, "Oh, but it's a it's a seal. Why do you care?" Mm. Well, the thing is, we went over and uh, we saw that it was all tangled in the line. Um, it was face down with its wings open, so obviously it flew down, struggled for a bit, and then just died with its mm. face on the road. A horrible way to go. But mm. while trying to detangle. The line that was around his wing and his leg, I found tags. Hmm. Um, a red tag on one leg uh, with numbers on it and a little metal tag, a steel tag on the other with some other numbers on it. Um, so then that got me thinking, right, this is part of a research project. It's not just some was. random bird that died or hmm. it's someone's pet or yeah, I wouldn't say it was a pet, but... You know what I mean? Yeah. Someone has made contact with this bird and it hmm. is numbered and tagged for a reason. Um, so like with weather balloons, I assumed, right, it's my legal obligation now. I found the thing. I have to somehow report it. Yeah, because at this point, we didn't know what to do. So Jared got a little bit of a brainstorm there to say, hey, we'll call um, the 24-hour vets. Ooh, no, I called the guards first. Oh, yes, you mm. did. Um, he called the guards and no one answered there. So we did a little bit of a brainstorm and, and Jared said, okay, maybe we should call like the 24 hour emergency vet. So we looked on our phones, found a, and found a number for the emergency vet. We got through to them and... Yeah, um, he said basically that, yeah, it would be part of a research team. Um, he didn't really know what to do either. He advised me to keep trying to get in contact with the guards, mm. that they would have a number for a game warden or maybe you know someone from the research team had let them know that you know they maybe maybe there was a memo somewhere if any birds are found it's part of this thing 
One thing came to mind um, when all of this happened. It was amazing that very few people know what to actually do in this situation. So again, this is us highlighting what to do and who to avoid talking to. Yeah. So we decided to go over to the Garda station because nobody was picking up. Yeah, so on the we, advice of the <clears throat> emergency vet, he told yeah. us that uh, if they weren't answering the phones, there's going to be someone in the station. Yeah, so at this point, we've already taken photos of the bird, how it died, and we've, we've documented it on our phones. And we decided to put the bird away somewhere that someone, one, can see it, two, two wasn't, wasn't going to run over it. Uh, yeah, and three, wasn't going to be attacked by dogs. Yeah. So we made sure that it was well out of the way, but it can still be seen. Yeah. So we drove away, went to the Garda station, and lo and behold, the Garda station was closed. Yeah, it turns out some <clears> guy <throat> up the road had actually been stabbed. And we didn't know this prior really, to... No, 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 I found that out a couple of days later. Yeah. And so there was a sign there saying that we had to call the Wicklow Garda station. So that's exactly what we did. Well, that's what you did. Yeah, so then... Um... <clears throat> That was fun. I decided to turn the camera on. I should have been recording the whole thing, but I decided to turn it on about halfway through recording uh -huh. or through the phone call because, like, I mean, I don't want to badmouth the guards or anything like that mm -hmm. on camera, but I mean, you know, yeah. your man was fairly annoying and useless. Um, mm. The first thing that he said to me was, like, <laughs> and I, I'll remember this, like, to the day I die. He goes, Man, I've been working for 12 years on this case and I've never had a I've never had a call about a dead bird in my life blah, 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 blah. which shows which, how very little they care about no they, they don't care they just don't, they care. don't care and even if they did have some sort of a uh, piece of paper on their yeah. desk to say hey if anybody calls in any sort of birds we have a tag on it this is who you forward it on to apparently yeah this well is I would have protocol. thought like any kind of <clears throat> national wildlife that was found dead not from natural causes that it has to be reported I thought mm. that was like a kind of normal thing apparently not apparently not no. so his advice was keep the bird and you know bring it back to them in the morning yeah so it was like okay we're not going to keep a dead bird I'm not going to keep a dead bird in my house overnight it's yeah. just not happening. The yeah. guards didn't know what they were talking about. Um, we knew more than them at this stage. So it's yeah. like, right, I'm not going to listen to them. So, so yeah, we decided we'll do the sensible thing. We'll go back and collect a bird. We went back, collected a bird, and took a few more uh, photos of the actual tag. So it was actually visible yeah. when we were going to be doing whatever we wanted with it, whether we were going to take it into the guard station or to the nearest vet or whatever it may be. But we took the bird, we decided to come back home and just lulled it over. And we decided, you know what, let's turn on the laptop, have a look on the internet and hey. Yeah, and that's when we found Birdwatch Ireland. Yeah. And these guys were great. Yeah, we'll put a description of uh, who to contact and the websites, uh, any information about any sort of birds, anything like that in the description below. So in future, if you do come across any sort of dead birds or anything like that with tags on them, these are the people to get in contact with. Yeah. Okay, so we emailed uh, the Birdwatch Island and it was colorings uh, birdwatchisland.ie and we found a little bit more about sequels than we actually wanted to. It, it turns out that the common goal, um, there's, there's, they're dispersed all over the place. But, yeah, uh, there's, there's like six or seven types of seagulls yeah. that we didn't know about. Yeah. Um, but anyway, they got back, we sent them an email and we sent them all the stuff. And they yeah. got back to us, and you have the replies there. And yeah. We're not going to go through the replies we'll line for line, but we'll give you the bullet points. Yeah, but uh, we got a re respond back from Helen. Uh, she was really nice about it, and basically just said that, you know, it was great to hear that uh, we got in touch with them, and they are part of their, their research. And uh, she forwarded the email over to Graham and Brian. Yeah, it turns out <coughs> these guys are the actual guys who put the rings on the birds and mm -hmm. are conducting the research themselves. Yeah, so, and Brian got back in touch. He was really helpful. Helen as well. They, they were just absolutely amazing. They, they did Brian responded. get back in touch or did Graham get back in uh, touch? Graham got back in touch. And Brian didn't. No, Brian just saw the email. But either way, uh, Graham basically said that uh, the, the gull that we found was actually a great, back, uh, sorry, great black-backed gull. Yes. And... <coughs> Most of them, have, most juveniles were seen either in in Belfast and Cork. And Cork, and they fly. They've dispersed from Dublin, and they generally fly from Belfast and Cork. 
Uh, so they've never actually left Ireland, but they do travel quite a lot. But the girl that we found actually yes, made it. Indeed. Yeah, made it all the way to France and back. Yeah. So yeah. and he was a juvenile. Yeah, and that's that's absolutely amazing. And we would have never known seagulls to fly that far. No. But it was amazing to find out, but also sad, because yeah. out of all the seagulls that they had, that were tagged, he was the only one that made it to France. Yeah. So. And he was the only one to die on a fishing hook. Yeah. Which uh, made Which, it kind of shitty. Yeah. So. It's really sad to hear. Um, yeah, but it was great to hear back from the guys, um, yeah. cause especially after dealing with the guards, you know, oh, I've never had to deal with this, and oh, I don't know what to tell you, and all this kind of stuff. Like, I, I had yeah. to start recording the call at one stage, Yeah. because uh, I was just shocked at how, uh, like, I don't mean to be insulting or anything, but I mean, travel is useless. Absolutely useless. Yeah. Uh, you, like, I didn't give a f Yeah, at this point, it was, it was a case that <coughs> there should be some sort of protocols in place. Um, if like, any sort of tags or like, anything... Any sort of wildlife yeah, with like any I've sort of I've never gotten a call off of a dead seagull in my life. I was like, look, mate, it's not exactly a natural everyday occurrence for me either, but, yeah, you know, here we are. We're trying to be responsible, good Samaritans, you know, but obviously that just washes off of most people. Yeah, that just kind of sets the tone for how people perceive animals in any sorts of walks of life, yeah. which is kind of sad. But anyway, um, getting off point... We got uh, that yeah. response from uh, Birdwatch Island, from Graham and um, yeah. and Helen. Um, absolutely fantastic. Graham sent out another email there, and he basically said that is it okay for him for for him to use the photos, as he's going to be passing it on to a journalist or someone that he knows just to highlight yeah, how certain doing a piece on wildlife, it, yeah, how certain wildlife are being affected by just you know general rubbish all over the place and just how these girls are actually dying and so yeah, we've asked them to keep in touch yeah. and um let us know when anything like that comes out because it'd be good to see yeah so uh graham thank you very much if you're seeing this um, and helen thank and you. helen yeah thank you guys you guys were absolutely amazing uh for responding back to us yeah you really validated us after um mm. after dealing with the guards yeah it was great to hear back and get the actual information from the bird and mm. you know for someone to actually go yeah you know thanks for what you did it was helpful yeah so it was that's really at the end really of the day, nice. that's all we wanted to do was be helpful because we felt bad. We were, we were there fishing and the, the bird died on fishing gear. Yeah, um, it wasn't our fishing gear because all no. of our lines and hooks. I'll say that it was green, thick mm. nylon line and we don't have that. Yeah, we have uh, monofilament yeah. lines, they're blue and the only 20 pound lines, they're not going to be any thicker than like less than a millimeter. So mm. Mono, I used to say, I meant to say, not nylon. Yeah monofilament and there's fluorocarbon as well if you don't know any of that but anyway getting a point again so yeah the bottom line to this episode is literally take your home take your home take your take home your, yeah take your rubbish home <laughs> yeah take your rubbish home guys and you know you don't want to be this is why most fishermen don't want to share their fishing spots is because you get absolute scrotes of the world going to those said sp uh, fishing spots and wrecking the place Leaving yeah. cans everywhere, leaving... Uh, and a lot of the time, it's not even going to be other fish. Right? Guys. It's going to be... Kids. Kids and teenagers. Just, just going and destroying the place. So come on, guys. Just take your rubbish home. If you have a can or two or bottles, just bring them home. It doesn't take a couple of seconds for you to just throw it into you, uh, your bag or a plastic bag that you have found literally walking. Uh, just, guys, take your rubbish home. Mm. Because it was very sad to find the bird. Yeah. And but it was if, still very funny, like thinking back on it, like that con that conversation I had with the guard on the phone. <laughs> it's just I was in stitches to the night thinking um, about it. I was telling my mate Jay about it and we were just in stitches. Um, we were in stitches. Just to let you know what happened with Steve. Well, Stephen Siegel. Um we we'll decided have a moment's silence for Stephen at the yeah. end. <laughs> yeah. Um we decided to bury him away from any wandering dogs or wildlife that might may or may not want to yes. dig him up and like at an undisclosed indisclosed location yeah just away from somewhere money. in our globe Ooh. either way that's what we did and we will now have that moment of silence for Stephen. Yeah. anyway guys <clears throat> i'll make sure to push
<laughs> okay, guys, uh, thank you for watching this episode. I know it was a long, drawn out episode of us just being Ranking a little bit preachy. Yeah, but it is important to take your rubbish home, guys. Even if you just do the usual thing that quite a lot of people are doing nowadays, take three pieces of plastic home with you if you're either hiking or trekking around in the mountains or even fishing or just walking by the beach. Just three pieces of plastic. You know, take yeah. it home. But to be fair though, I mean, we've been to our club beach a lot of the time and there is no rubbish generally around there. Mm. Which is great. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, um, we'll leave a few descriptions and below for all the contacts that you need to know about if you do come across any sort of dead wildlife with any sort of tags. And also to just to check out the Birdwatch Island website because they've got loads of information there. Yeah, very about, interesting stuff as well, actually. Yeah. So loads of different uh, birds and different sort of... Yeah, it's Birdwatch Island, so... Lots of birds and watching of those birds. Yeah. Loads of information there. Yeah. And on any other episodes, if you want to actually see where we normally fish, there's a little eye circle thing at the top right there, which will have a little bit of a playlist for you guys to view and click through. Yes. If Please not, like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff if you want to. Yeah, no pressure at all. So please like, share, comment, subscribe. Yeah. Um, and keep an eye on us this summer. We've got a couple of cool ideas that we want to do. Um, yeah. Some things outside of the county of Wicklow. Yeah. So if you guys do see us around, by all means, come over, chat to us, enjoy some yeah. of our food. We mentioned if we're this in before. your town, um, you know, come out, show us some decent fishing spots. Yeah. Or just hang out and, you know, be in the video. Just, Can if you want. Yeah. That's if you don't want your, uh, that's only if you want your face on the camera and to be publicized on YouTube. So we'll see you guys in the next episode. Not no. right there, but over there. Somewhere. And it's still recording. <laughs> <laughs>